welcome to part 25 of Model Engineering for Beginners and this episode is all about drilling and reaming in the lathe. I'm making a tailstock die holder and I would advise any beginner to lathe work to put this on your list of things to make. Not only is it a very useful tool, you get to figure out general machining, hole drilling, reaming and later on boring. In this clip I'm drilling the first hole through the centre and this is half an inch in diameter twist drill is held in my tailstock chuck and you will notice it is thoroughly covered in oil. A lot of heat is being generated by the tip of the drill bit but also as the rest of the drill bit goes through the hole that's also going to generate some heat. So it's always a good idea to apply as much lubrication as you can. If you have coolant this is even better. Personally I do not use industrial lathe coolant in my model engineers workshop because it makes me smell of coolant all the time and I don't like the smell of it to be honest. A friend of mine who I've known for many years is a professional turner and he works on a lathe every day and when he comes within about five feet of you you can smell the industrial coolant and he's not dirty, well not particularly, but he always smells like the contents of a chip tray and I really don't want that to happen in my life. Currently I do not have a wife, I don't particularly want one either, I've had enough of those. But my last wife used to complain when I smelt of oil, which I must admit I do, I do a lot of metal work, so you smell of metal and oil and stuff like that. Even though you wash, there's still just a hint of metal about my person. I actually quite like it, but that is not the point. It's definitely not attractive to the opposite sex, or even members of your own sex, depending on your gender identity. In this clip, I'm facing across the front of the work, I can't get all the way across because I have a live centre in there. So as the lathe tool got very close to it, I removed the live centre and took the last bit out manually. There's enough meat in this piece of steel for it to be rigid enough to be turned without using the centre. And the same goes with the longitudinal cut. It's quite a substantial piece of steel, the chuck's good, and the part is very securely clamped in the jaws of the chuck. As I'm taking a much lesser cut as previously shown, the chips are not breaking and all of the swarf is bunching together in a big ball. A health and safety warning, if this happens be very careful, it's getting very close to the chuck and if the chuck should catch up in this ball of swarf it will throw it across the workshop and if you're in the way that's unfortunate. Where possible it's a really good idea not to stand in the firing line of the chuck. This tailstock die holder is going to be a handheld device so I don't want any part of it to be sharp. And that's why I'm using this carbide tip V tool to create a chamfer on the edge. Always remember, a 90 degree angle on a freshly turned piece of metal bar is razor sharp, and I mean razor sharp. It's always a good idea to either chamfer the parts or at least use a file to just dull the edge. Now it's time for the drilling operation. The first drill bit that I'm pushing through the work is a half inch drill bit which is held in the tailstock chuck. The lubrication is very important, as you see here I'm putting plenty of oil on the part, as well as on the drill bit itself. I tend to be lazy and leave my lathe set at the same speed most of the time. Do bear in mind, the smaller the drill bit, the faster the rotational speed needs to be. But a half inch drill bit is not a small drill bit as such, so it's ok at this speed. The hole down this piece of metal needs to be just over 16mm because the die that I'm using is an M16 by 1.5 which is the thread that's used in the larger commercial camping gas type gas bottles. After drilling all the way through the bar using a half an inch diameter twist drill I now need to use a larger drill bit. Time to get serious, no more tailstock chuck for this drill. This one goes straight into the tailstock with a number 2 Morse taper. One problem with drilling in the lathe is often if you're using a twist drill, particularly a big one, in the tailstock chuck, if the drill grabs it rotates and this damages the shank of the drill. That's why I'm using this type of twist drill. To make it easy to see, I've stopped the video and you can see how the twist drill fits directly into the tailstock. This imperial twist drill is just under 5 8 of an inch in diameter. The final cut will be made using a 5 8 of an inch diameter reamer. To use this though I'm slowing down the lathe I've engaged back gear. I'm going to use plenty of oil for this part of the job. I want the reamer to go all the way through this piece of metal and leave a really good finish in the bore. If I don't use oil the bore's going to get scratched 
and it won't be good. Here we go then, the ream has been entered into the hole and I'm pushing it through the hole quite gently. I don't want to rush this or force it, you can feel when the reamer is cutting. This is a very old reamer, I've had it for many many years and it's still okay, I don't know how it's still okay, it's a 5 h reamer, I think I got it from the scrapyard. The name on it is Dorma and it's a really good tool. But I must mention that the work that the tools are given in a home workshop is nowhere near the work they would be doing in industry 8 hours a day. I didn't want to risk the chippings clogging up the reamer so I withdrew it, brushed it off with an old paintbrush and re-lubricated it for the rest of the job. Jobs like this are not very dynamic, you can't rush the job because otherwise you would probably spoil it and you have to go to a very slow pace. Simple routine lathe work like this can be a bit on the boring side. I would recommend that if you find your concentration is lapsing, do something else for a while and come back to it. One thing's for certain, you do need to concentrate on what you're doing in a lathe because if it goes spectacularly wrong, bits of metal can fly about, things can break and at the worst you could get part of yourself caught up in the mechanism. And if you think about it, this is far less boring than sitting in the waiting room in A&E in great pain. The job is complete. Time to see if everything fits together. This is the original shaft from my other tailstock die holder and it doesn't fit in the hole. It is not 5 eighths. It is metric. Oh no, oh dear, what am I going to do? I do not have a 16mm reamer. In the next episode, I'll show you a solution to the problem. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.